Okay guys, so today we're going to talk about the properties of the derivative. And this is going to allow us to take derivatives without having to do the limit process that was pretty long as we discovered in the previous videos. So we're going to start with the first one which is called linearity, or the first two rather. So when you're going to take the derivative of a function, or the sum, of two functions, rather. What you can do is you can take the derivative of each one of them individually and add them together. The next one is if you have a constant, say alpha, times a function f, what that's going to allow you to do, or what you're going to be able to do, is pull that constant out and take the derivative just of f of x. So that's going to allow us to simplify things like a polynomial, for example, where you have a constant times a power of x plus constant times power of x. You'll be able to split it and just focus on the powers of x. And with that said, the next one will allow us to do just that. This is going to be called the power rule. And it tells us how to take the derivative of a power of x. So if you have x to the n, you do the following. You drop that exponent, and then you multiply times x, and you grab that exponent and you subtract 1 from it. And that works for any n. It doesn't matter if it's a real, if, it, if it's sorry, um, rational, irrational, if it's integer, whatever it may be, you can use that formula. So with that, we're going to be able to compute derivatives. Just these three properties will allow us to take derivatives of any polynomial. So let's do a couple examples with that. So let's compute the derivative of f of x. And this is going to look a lot like the one we did by the definition. If I remember correctly, that was the same function we did. So the way we do it now, we don't do the limit and all that long process we did. We just use what we just talked about, these, two, these three properties. And what you would do is you would take the derivative. Firstly, I'm going to go in all in extreme detail. You don't have to do this, but just so you see how we're using each property, I'm going to show you every single step. So it's going to look like it's a lot of work, but then when we do the next example, it's going to be super easy. So firstly, we separate these sums and subtractions. You're allowed to separate them out. So you take the derivative of this x squared, then minus the derivative. I'm going to do one at a time the derivative of that 2x, and then your derivative of, of 3. And I guess I did forget how to tell you how to take the derivative of that constant, but we'll do it in one second. All right, so let's move over here, and let's continue with our derivative. So the first one, it's already in the form that I need to apply that um, power rule. In this case, n would be equal to 2. And uh, and we could apply the rule. Yes, I did drop the markers. So let's grab the 2, put it in the front, copy the x, and then that's my n times x. And then I'm going to raise it to the power of n minus 1. So that's going to be that. Now the next one, I still have to do one thing. I have a 2. The rule here doesn't involve any constant. So I'm going to be able, I'm going to have to pull that 2 out first. And then I'm going to take the derivative of um, x. And then the next one is going to be the derivative of 3, which you could think about as x to the 3 times, sorry, times x to the 0. If you think about it that way, we don't need a new rule to compute it. And that's going to be going to tell us how to do it. So here we get 2 times x minus 2 times here, 
this is going to be a 1. There's going to be a 1 implicitly here in the x. So you're going to drop a 1. You're going to multiply times x. And you're going to do 1 minus 1, which is going to be 0. That's going to give you a 1. And then here you would technically do a 0 times x to the 0 minus 1. That's not the best way to do it. I, sh I had to tell you that the derivative of a constant is 0, but I forgot where we're going to recover it from here. In any event, we get 2x. Here we get 2 times 1. And then x to the 0 is going to be 1. So 2 times 1 times 1 is going to be 2. And this one is going to be 0 times something that is non-zero, potentially, uh, times 3. So that's going to be plus 0. We're not going to write it. We're going to leave it at that. And that is our derivative. And that's what we got last time by doing a whole um, uh, limit process. So it took a lot longer. Now that you know that you can separate it out like that, we can do another example and do it a lot more summarized. So example two. Now let's give ourselves uh, a little bit more uh, variation here. So let's do a cube. And then let's do a minus 1 over x, if you will. That would be OK. And we can take the derivative now using this, all these rules. So firstly, I can take the derivative of dx cubed. How do I do that? This is my n. Now n is 3 in my power rule. So I drop the 3, copy the x. Then instead of 3, I'm going to put 3 minus 1 as the exponent. So that one was no problem. I computed that derivative. But this one doesn't look like this at all. So what do I do? Well, I just rewrite it, because this one we can rewrite as x to the negative 1. And now x is equal to negative 1. I can apply it there. So my derivative becomes, copy this guy, 3x squared minus, you're going to drop the negative 1. You're going to copy the x, and you're going to do negative 1 minus 1. And so that's going to be 3x squared minus negative plus the 1 we don't copy. We just do the x. It's implicit there. And then do negative 2. And to me, that's perfectly fine. Um, you could potentially write this as 1 over x squared, do common denominator. Uh, but that, that already is good enough for me. All right, so those are two examples with the power rule. So I'm going to go ahead and erase here, and we'll, we'll do a few more. All right, guys, so now we're going to do example three. So we're going to do it just a little bit more complicated, or it will seem more complicated. So let's say g now is going to be the function uh, x cubed minus um, 2x plus 3, let's say. I like 3, apparently. And then let's divide it by x squared. So now that doesn't look anything like this. But the fact that we have a monomial in the numerator allows us to reorganize this algebraically before we can compute our derivative. So you can distribute this and write it as x cubed over x squared minus 2x over x squared plus 3 over x squared. Now, notice I distributed. This is not the same as some people make the mistake. They cancel this, cancel this x squared with this x cubed and just get an x minus 2x. You have a division there that you have to operate for every single term. Whenever you have an addition and a multiplication outside, you use the distributive property. You cannot just operate one term. But that's a very common mistake, so I want you to be uh, mindful of it so you don't make that mistake. So here you have x cubed over x squared is just going to give you an x. Then minus 2, x over x squared is going to be 2 over x. And here I'm going to have plus 3 over x squared. Now, what I'm going to do to be able to use the properties I'm, we're discussing today, I'm going to go ahead and write this in terms of their negative exponents. So for example, x just stays like this. But here I have 2x to the negative 1 
instead of 2 over x. Then I get 3x to the negative 2. And now here, th now that I have manipulated my expression algebraically, I can compute my derivative. But one, one word of warning here as well. Some people work all this algebra here, and they say, OK, I'm done. The problem is finished. And it, the problem is not finished yet. You haven't taken the derivative. It's very common to have people do this part, which admittedly is the harder part of the problem, and forget altogether that they're actually having to take the derivative. So don't do that. Remember you're taking the derivative. All right, so the derivative of x would be the derivative of, derivative of x to the power of 1. Drop the 1, copy the x, and raise it to the power of 1 minus 1. Then here, I want to have a 2 times, drop the negative 1 in the exponent, copy the x, and subtract 1. And then here, we have plus 3, drop the negative 2, copy the x, and subtract 1. So negative 2 minus 1. Eey, that one, that minus 1 went outside. Trust me, there's a minus 1 there. So we get an x to the power of 0, which I should have not even written. That's going to be a 1. And then minus negative plus 2 times x to the negative 2. And then here, plus 3 times negative 2, so minus 6, x to negative 3. And as I said in the previous problem, this is good enough for me. Um, Sometimes in your textbooks, you will have, they'll do a common denominator x cubed. And then they would have here x cubed plus 2x minus 6. By doing a common denominator, um, I, don't, I don't do that, but you're welcome to do that if you prefer. All right, so that, those are the examples we're going to do. Oh, there's one more, sorry. Let me do one more. Example 4. Another case that we have to address, and that is when you have a function, say, f, and you're going to have a square root of x, and then minus, let's say, 1 over 2 square root of x. Something along those lines. All right, so how do you address that one? Again, you'll have to manipulate this algebraically so that you can actually compute your derivative. So here you will write this as x to 1 half. And this term, you're going to write as 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. OK? So you're going to do that. Why do you do it? Just so that you can apply your, po your power rule. Otherwise, you don't have really any tool available unless you want to go through the limit definition. You don't want to do that, trust me. So we write it so we can use the power rule. So we take the derivative, the derivative of the first. You grab the exponent. and subtract 1 from the exponent. Now you have a 1 half. You drop the exponent, negative 1 half. And then you have negative 1 half, subtract 1 from it. So now pause the video and compute these fractions, these subtractions on your own. Um, the way you would do it, you would change the 1 for a 2 over 2, so you have a common denominator and you operate. But pause for one second and compute it so, you ag so we can agree on the result. So we get 1 half, this is what I'm getting, I get a negative 1 half for this one, and then here I have negative 1 half minus 1 half becomes plus 1 fourth, and then x to negative 3 halves. So hopefully we got the same. Of course, you could put this in the denominator as a square root. This would be x times the square root of x. Um, but I, I prefer not to do that, as you now know. So I recommend that in the exam, in my class, you leave this like this. Because I have seen several times when people get the result correctly, the calculus part is right, and then they go ahead and try to simplify, and the algebra fails. I cannot give you full credit. Because you, even though you did the calculus correctly, you still got the wrong answer. If you would have stopped right there, I can give you full credit. So it's just, just better for you to not 
try to simplify it further is going to be beneficial to you. All right, so let's go ahead and erase this. We're going to now start looking at uh, derivatives of exponential functions and trigonometric functions.